ladies and gentlemen, Pete Carmichael, breaking news. Pete Carmichael, fired, let go, gone, see ya. Given his papers, out as Saints offensive coordinator. Hallelujah, hark the Herald Angels sings. This is a great day for the Saints, great day for the fans. The Saints are doing something, and the Saints are doing the right thing. News was broken by New Orleans football, I believe. That's who I saw it from. I'll give them credit. Uh, Mike Triplett, Nick Underhill, and the gang over there were reacting to their video. This has all happened within the last 60 minutes, all happened without, with, within the last hour. I thought I was dreaming when I saw the news. You hate to, you know, you hate to, we wish Pete the best. We hardly knew ye. Happy for what Pete gave us for 20 years, and, you know, I'm sure he'll enjoy uh, his time off. So it is what it is. It's had to happen. We talked about it all year long. We talked about it day after day, game after game, week after week. Finally, finally, the Saints are joining the rest of the teams and trying to better their team for 2024, 2025. So this is a good thing for the offense, a good thing for, uh, for the team, for the fans. We'll talk about it in this video as far as who possibly could be what, what the move is now, what possibly could happen, what I want to see happen. But let's go ahead and get into the video. The Saints have officially parted ways with three offense. Woo! Brooks sounds like the rest of us, ladies and gentlemen. I'm telling you, the city is not built for 20 degrees weather. It's 20 degrees right now. It was 65 degrees yesterday. 40 degree swing. Everybody feeling sick. Everybody down. Everybody coughing. You know, a lot of congestion going on. So I feel I feel for you, ladies and gentlemen. Get get your Mucinex in. Get your Claritin D in. Pause. Continue the video. Offensive coaches, the offensive coordinator Pete Carmichael, wide receivers coach Cody Burns, and senior offensive assistant Bob Bicknell. Welcome back to the dot, presented by Matt Bowers Auto Group. I'm Brooke Kershaw. For Pete Carmichael is officially out after 15 seasons. As the Saints offensive coordinator, a few highlights from his tenure in New Orleans. One in 2012, he single handed Zero highlights, okay? Zero highlights. The man was, I, I you don't want to be smeech the guy. You know, he's already on the way out, no point in it. But from the start, when Peyton left, it became apparent that Pete, he might be a game planner, or he may be a video guy, or he may be a you know someone to bounce ideas off of. It was obvious he was not the guy to call plays, orchestrate the offense, and be the person for the offense, okay? It happens. When you have someone like Sean Payton and you have someone even like Mike McDaniel, people like that, you know, the Sean McVay's of the world, the Kyle Shanahan's of the world, that are so that are so hands-on with the offense, sometimes the coordinators, they're, they're not as involved as some other coordinators might be. No fault to Pete, but it did become apparent when Sean left, it became, and it was definitely apparent last year, we broke down the analytics every single week when they were available. Shout out, Patton Analytics. And Pete Carmichael was bottom two, bottom three, sometimes far and away the worst play caller in the NFL. As of right now, most of the people in the bottom of that list have been fired. You know, Art Smith was in the bottom of that list. He's canned. So it's a ruthless business. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. You know, I mean, Nick Sirianni last night lost a playoff game. He is over a 65% win, win rate in three years. He's got a division title. He's been to a Super Bowl, got a conference title, loses the game last night, and now people are talking about firing him. So it's a ruthless business. The NFL is a results-based, ruthless, ruthless industry. There's only 32 of these jobs. Some of them, that's not, it's not even true. The Patriots haven't had an offensive coordinator a true offensive coordinator in like seven or eight years. So some teams don't even have these positions. So to be top 30 in the world at something, you got to prove it. And Pete Carmichael didn't prove it. And the Saints have a lot invested in this offense. Derek Carr, right? They have, they have to make sure the offense is working. And this is as much of a sign of trying to improve the team as it is trying to get the most out of Carr. Again, they're locked into that. You know, we talked about the car contract. We talked about car next year. Next year, Derek Carr is the quarterback, and Derek Carr was good to finish the season. So everything that they're going to do in the next 12 months or in the next couple of months to set up the next 12 months, everything they do is to make that investment as good as possible. So 
get Carr, the best offensive coordinator, get him the weapons he needs to succeed, try and win. Try and win in that bubble. We can win. We can be Tampa Bay. We can be a team like that next year. We should be better than that. We have the playmakers. We have the weapons. So Mickey's job now, and credit to Mickey, all right? Credit to Mickey for acting fast. We, in a couple of videos ago, we were saying, you know, he was talking about going on vacation. He was talking about sunning his, his little toes. I'm glad he didn't do that. I'm glad he at least did this to show the fan base we're, we're moving forward. We're taking steps to improve the team. We heard you. We've seen it. Okay, let's go. And this is a big step, for sure, to get rid of Carmichael. More than likely, this means Allen is okay as far as getting fired. More than likely, the culture, locker room situation will tr try and be handled, and Allen will probably be given a couple games to start the season before a move might be made there. But if it was between Carmichael and Allen, I would rather have Carmichael gone. I would rather, and it's not even about him being gone. It really isn't. It's more about bringing someone else in with new ideas, innovative, to catch the Saints up to the rest of the league. I'm okay with Allen just handling the, the defense. I don't care if he's the head coach, if he's just focusing on defense. So now the job for Mickey is to go find an innovative, young, outside voice to lead this offense. And make no mistake about it, I say young, but it doesn't have to be young. Uh, if, if it's Eric Bieniemy, it can be Eric Bieniemy. okay? It can be, it doesn't have to be young. But they have to own this offense. This is not a come in, call plays. This is build a system, innovate, own the entire offense. Yes, call plays, handle the, the in-game situations. This is a big position. This is a big role. This is not a... Offensive coordinator where you're coming in and you're just expected to call plays. You basically have to be like an assistant head coach. And whoever you hire, this is for Mickey Loomis, because I know you watch the channel. Whoever you hire in this role, you better be okay with them being the head coach in a year. Because there's a good chance Dennis Allen ain't going to be there at the end of the year. If the Saints struggle to start, Allen should be the next to go. And whoever you bring in here, they're owning the offense. They're owning the vision. They're owning all of that. So you might as well believe that they could probably also step in and be the head coach. Ridley coached the offense after Sean Payton served a season suspension. He also played an integral part in bringing in quarterback Derek Carr this offseason. There was speculation that Carmichael would even return for the 2023 season. Now, after an up and down 9-8 and 2023 season and a shaky start with the offense to start the season, Carmichael is officially out. We will see. Man, I mean, you, you, like that's all you can really say, right? How good the Saints' offense has been for as long as it as as it's been good. And they, the highlight for Pete Carmichael's tenure is he he attended the dinner at Ralph's on the Park or whatever for, to get Derek Carr here. That was his. He he ordered a you know a roasted red snapper at Ralph's on a on a Wednesday to get Derek Carr here. Like that that was his that was his thing. So. This is good. I'm very excited. This starts the offseason. Because, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget this. The draft is coming up. So if we're going to, and I'm not saying we should draft an offensive player, but if we are going to draft offensive players, you want that person in the building evaluating those players, talking to the rest of the coaches. I would assume, I mean, I think Brooke said three. I think a wide receiver, she said a wide receiver coach, Pete Carmichael, and the senior assistant offensive whatever the title was, are gone. So whoever's coming in to be the new OC has to fill those positions. There might be other positions that are either let go or filled or however it works out, but they also have to start scouting. They have to plan this and they have to go get free agents. There's a lot that has to be done, but the first domino has fallen. That's the most important thing. We're doing something. We're not just standing still. This is one of those things where all you can ask for as a fan is a step forward. We've talked about it a million times. No team is going to fire their head coach, their GM, their quarterback, their OC, their DC. They're not going to do that all in the same breath. Okay? You got to tip over that first domino. And the first one is tipped. So now we move forward. OC is hard to fill as far as like forecasting it because with head coach, 
you have all of the OCs and all of the head coaches that can kind of slide in there. OC is different because you, you got to start worrying about what's a demotion, what's a lateral move. For example, the enemy. Eric Bieniemy is someone I wanted to and to be possibly in our head coaching conversation. Bieniemy is the head coach in Washington. Washington doesn't have a head coach. He's looking for head coach positions. Would he move to be the OC somewhere else? Joe Brady is a good example too. Joe Brady is someone that I'm very interested in. He's the OC in Buffalo, the interim OC. Why would he leave being the OC in Buffalo? to come be the OC in New Orleans. The only way is if Buffalo, if they demoted him and hired a new OC and then told Brady to do something else, right? So it's tricky. More than likely, you have to go and look at a coordinator or look at a, an assistant who's not an OC or maybe even just got canned, which, which does, you know, or in college, you know, like like uh, Todd Munkin going from Georgia to to Baltimore, something like that. So it's hard to forecast. It's much easier for head coaches to say, oh, we want Bobby Slowick, or we want uh, Joe Brady, or we want Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson is not going to be the OC of the Saints. Okay, He's asking $15 million a year to be the head coach somewhere. It's not going to happen. So now we have to really look. We have to really turn over every stone to figure out who possibly uh, could be this guy. But I will tell you this. I think my criteria they have to be outside the building. No one internally. Nobody internally. A lot of people are going to say, I, I can already see the comments now. I haven't even published the video. A lot of people are going to say, what about uh, RC? What about Curry? I don't want anyone from the building. I want a new vision. I want a new idea. I want I want new stuff. I want evolution. We got to push this team. We got to push the offense forward. A lot of people are going to say Gruden. They've already said Gruden's not going to be the OC. If Gruden wanted to be the OC, if that changed, would I want that? Honestly, no. That's going to that's gonna ruffle some feathers. If that was the last option, I would rather Gruden than Carmichael. But Gruden is not evolving. Gruden isn't innovating. Gruden is who he is. right? Gruden is going to do a lot of the same stuff he was doing before. I want someone to come in that's going to change all kinds of stuff. I want someone that's going to change how we do things. Current OCs uh, that I like, you know, obviously the the like Kellen Moores and the Slowicks and Johnson and uh, you know Joe Brady, like we mentioned, Ken Dorsey. You know, team, I mean, he's he's a he's not on a team, but that's the kind of that's the mold that I'm looking for. I'm looking for somebody who's that new line of thinking, somebody who can get a lot out of the quarterback position, someone who's not afraid to take chances use motion, be creative. I would love if they were from a tree like that, if they're from the, the Shanahan tree or from the McVeigh tree somewhere in there where they're there. That's how they're thinking. You know, the Shanahan tree where they're thinking, okay, we're moving people around. We're getting creative. We're doing pre-snap motion, you know, all of that. So it's exciting, but I wanted to get this video out there, hear the news from me, my instant reaction. Uh, really, 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 really fun times now. Uh, now the offseason truly begins. What direction the Saints organization will go as far as who the new offensive coordinator will be in 2024. Good stuff. Get down in the comments below right now. Get down there right now, ladies and gentlemen. Plug your keyboards in. Get, get, your, get your fingers ready. Start typing. And let me know who you want to be the OC next season. Throw some names out there. Stay warm if you live in New Orleans. Temperature is nuts. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.